All right. Uh, thank you, everybody, for coming. Uh, those of you in the room, but also those folks watching online now and in the future. Um, <laughs> so thank you. Uh, first, an introduction. Uh, I'm Scott Shawcroft. I go by Tan Newt online. If you've ever seen that, that's me. Um, it's weird, which means it's mine, which is great. Uh, I'm a freelance software engineer, and I'm the project lead on CircuitPython for Adafruit. I've been doing that almost three years. Uh, it'll be three years in August. And that's me uh, with Blinka, who is our mascot and is also at the bottom of a bunch of our slides. Um, here's the plan uh, for the next, uh, oh, I should start a timer, uh, 25 minutes-ish. Um, first, I'm going to do a live demo so I can get that out of the way. Uh, and then I will talk about what I mean by supercharging your hardware. And then we'll do a deep dive uh, into a vertical slice of how the demo works. Um, so we'll do software, and then we'll talk hardware after that. Uh, so let's do the demo. So Hannah's going to help me out. So, so the speaker's here. I will show you what we have. Recognize that sound? So what I have here is a Game Boy. It's a DMG, and it has a special cart that's running CircuitPython. And so I'm going to take a couple minutes to just show you what I mean by supercharging. So I have a USB. I'm going to let you hold it. Juggle. So I just plugged it, the USB cable into the cartridge, and if we look on Finder, we get a CircuitPython drive. It says CircuitPy. It's a little small, so just take my word for it. It binged again. That, uh, the, what CircuitPython does is every time the file, a, anything on the drive is written, it auto restarts your code. So you're going to hear a lot of bings and boops in the next few minutes. Um, so I'm going to open it up. And, all right. Uh, so what I have here is a pretty simple file uh, that lets me poke the bits in the first sound register, like the first voice of the Game Boy's sound registers. Um, I've commented out some of the fancier stuff. I'm going to start just with frequency. So I'm going to switch this uh, bit 1 uh, from a 0 to a 1, and I'm just going to hit Control S for save. Hopefully. Oh, no. Let's just turn it off and back on again, shall we? Uh, oh, yeah, it's not happy. This is a Game Boy thing, not a CircuitPython thing. <laughs> and we'll go into why that's tricky later. So we'll start it back up, and the drive will show up. Ah, it's a different sound. And there's the drive. And so now, hopefully, it'll work. We drop those two bits down, and we should get a low note. Wah. Um, we can play with the envelope, which is uh, how long the note plays. Or, or change the initial volume, so hopefully we can make it a little louder. Or longer. Uh, we can change the lower frequency note bits. <laughs> and then the funnest, the, the most fun part, uh, I will skip to because we're a little behind, I assume, uh, is the sweep register. This is unique to the first voice, I believe. And it's what makes a lot of the sound effects you hear in Game Boy games. What it does is it changes the frequency of the pitch as the note plays. So if I just uncomment it and hit save again, we're increasing. Um, maybe we don't want to start that, you know, that low in frequency. So that sounds a little bit more like what we've heard before. Uh, we can change the duration. So it's even longer, 
or we can do it real short. Um, <laughs> it's so small. So let's make it longer again so we can hear it. It's about as long as it gets. And then we can do the opposite direction for our grand finale. Oh, that's, a, that's such a sad note. <laughs> All right, I take that back. Let's do something else. Let, let's make it go up again, and let's make it be a little bit like quick about it. Perfect. All right, that's the live demo. <laughs> Thank you. I'll save the batteries so I can show you more later. Um, so the reason I like doing these CircuitPython demos, let's put it on a pedestal. Um, the reason I like doing these live demos is it demonstrates how quickly you can I iterate on your code on, with CircuitPython. Um, all of the functionality, all of the parsing, everything that runs the code lives on the device itself, um, which makes it super powerful. I'm getting a little ahead of myself. So there's two parts. Oh, yes. Uh, this, is part of the re this talk is part of the reason I got into it. Uh, it's an hour-long talk from uh, 33C3 by Michael Style. It's very good. If you want to know about all the registers in the entire Game Boy and how it works and how the CPU works, uh, it's an hour-long, action-packed overview of how the Game Boy actually works. So I won't cover that today. Um, I'm just going to move on and talk more about the CircuitPython stuff. So um, we think of CircuitPython as two pieces of a larger puzzle. Uh, the first is code, and the second is community. I split that into two slides, um, but they're both equally important to supercharging charging your hardware. Um, if you're not aware, Python is a programming language that is very commonly taught as the very first programming language for folks. It's very easy to get into. Uh, CircuitPython uh, brings Python to hardware, and the code and the tool chain live all on the device. So you, the only software I was using to do that iteration was my text editor, and I was just saving to the drive that it shows up. So it's super quick, uh, works on Chromebooks, that sort of thing, which is really great. Um, on the code side, we currently support the SAMD21, SAMD51, and the NRF52840. Um, so if you have devices of your own that have those chips in them, it's very easy to add support for CircuitPython. Um, and credit where credit is due, we are built on MicroPython, which it did uh, laid a, the initial foundation for Python on microcontrollers. So community-wise, um, we have a very active community. Uh, we have a code of conduct, so we make sure everybody is welcomed and friendly to each other. We enforce it as well, which is great. Uh, our community lives kind of on our Discord channel where we have a weekly meeting that everyone is welcome to attend, and then also on our GitHub. Um, we have 150 plus CircuitPython compatible libraries currently, uh, and that's growing every day. Uh, and we have 60 plus supported boards, uh, and those boards have those three platforms that I mentioned earlier. Um, this is the top of our downloads page. So this is circuitpython.org slash downloads. Uh, you can see there's a lot of different form factors uh, that we've been working on, and they all are supported by CircuitPython. Um, two things that Adafruit's been working on that were of particular interest to me were the Pi badge on the left and the Pi gamer on the right, um, because they're gaming, and I like gaming. Um, and I thought, you know, it would be great if CircuitPython was a platform for people to make handheld games. It's very easy. The code goes with you. It's all open source. That's super cool. And then I was like, you know, why don't we bring those to another platform, the Game Boy? Um, I had watched Michael's talk, and I was like, you know, I think we could do it. Um, so just quick overview for those of you who don't know. On the left is the original Game Boy. It's known as the DMG because that's in the product model number. Um, it's the big gray thing, and that's what I have here. Uh, the middle is a Game Boy Pocket. It was a later iteration that was a lot smaller. It's like two AAAs rather than four AA's. Um, and then on the right-hand side is Game Boy Color, um, which came even later and had, had some interesting limitations but allowed you to show color. None of these are backlit. I gave my niece one, and she was like, how do I turn the brightness up? And I was like, well, 
<laughs> that's not you can mod it now to do it but none of mine are modded so these are unmodified stuff so uh, okay let's talk hardware um, so how does the hardware work uh, I took them apart I enjoy taking them apart I give them a bath and make sure they're clean and stuff I actually took these pictures before I washed the DMG and it looks a lot better now I had a sticky button that I've cleaned up um, some interesting things to note here uh, on the left the DMG is actually uh, multiple boards. It's, it's got two major boards sandwiched uh, this way that are kind of hard to see, plus the sound related boards on the bottom. Um, and then the color and the pocket are a lot more similar. They're a single board. Um, and basically they have one chip that does everything, uh, which is that uh, kind of horizontal chip above the black uh, rectangle. And the big black rectangle is the cartridge connector. So the way it works is um, a cartridge is basically memory that you can swap in and out. Um, on the left, we have uh, the Tetris cart, which was packed with Game Boys in the United States. So you can find them pretty regularly. And it's the simplest because all of the code and all of the graphics and all of the sound could fit within memory, uh, with the, in the memory address space that was given on the 16-bit address bus. So basically, you get 16 bits in of what you want to read, and you get 8 bits out of, of the data that you're reading. Um, Tetris is simple because it's relatively small. In the middle, we have Mary Kate and Ashley Pocket Planner. Um, <laughs> I know. Uh, I tend to go to, so I cut up the carts so that my, my cart can fit in it. So I go to the game store and be like, what's the cheapest thing I can buy? Um, but this cart is actually pretty interesting from an engineering standpoint uh, because one, it uh, required more memory space than the address space gave you. So they have a different techniques for banking in different memory depending on what part of the game you're in. Uh, and then in, in addition to that, um, the way that saves worked for this era is that they put a, put a battery in the cartridge um, to keep your RAM that's had your save states going. So if you have a Pokemon game from when you were little, look online and figure out how to swap the battery. Otherwise, you'll lose it eventually when the battery runs out. Um, so that's what the thing in the top right is. And then on the, the furthest right cart is the cart that I designed uh, to run CircuitPython in the Game Boy. Um, let's go into that. Um, again, as I said, uh, you can see kind of here that there's 15 address lines, eight data lines coming in. There's a few clock and power and control signals as well. Uh, the general layout is uh, the bottom three things are logic level shifters. Uh, the top right thing is a logic sh level shifter, like a tri-state buffer and then uh, SAMD51, and then a bunch of MIDI stuff, because chiptunes are fun. Um, so this idea of uh, MCU as a cart is not my idea. Uh, somebody used an STM32F4 uh, development kit to actually do some tricks by hosting, like serving up ROMs using the STM. Uh, and the basic challenge is serving your data on the bus at a one megahertz clock rate. Uh, there's some debate whether a, a Game Boy is four or one megahertz, uh, but the memory bus is one megahertz. Um, and I chose to use the SAMD51 because, I, as I mentioned earlier, it's really easy to port to different SAMD51 platforms. Um, and I worked on it, so I know the chip a lot. So the basics of the hardware, uh, we have access to the reset line, which means we can start the Game Boy when we want, which is great because we know exactly what it's expecting in order. Uh, we use DMA to queue up a sequences of data so that we can say like, oh, I want to write to this sound register and I issue the, the instructions and the data to be able to pull that off. I actually ignore the address completely to do that. And then I use, uh, the SAMD51 has like four lookup tables uh, that you can use to do like very basic things. And I and the A15 clock and read because A15 is the, the memory. If the bit is high, it's not us. If the bit is low, it is us. Um, and this means that we can switch the game logic from uh, the Game Boy CPU into the SAMD51 and in Python. Uh, so let's talk about how that's done. Um, if you want, this is the repo for it. It's all MIT licensed, uh, and you can go hack on it if you like. Um, I have a presentations repo under myself uh, that has this, this presentation in it and others as well. Um, so as I said earlier, adding a board is really easy. Here's kind of like the super high level steps that it, that it takes. Um, we have a boards folder that has every board in it. Uh, those folders for each board have four 
files in it, which include like, what exact version of the SAMD51 are you? Do you have external spy flash? And what is your pin mapping? Once you have that, we also, you should add it to our travis.yaml. We'll build it every time we change anything so we know that we don't break you. Um, and it also means that we can auto-release all the files for you. So we have like 700 different versions of CircuitPython <laughs> that you can get because we, not only do we build every board, but we build every language for every board. So we have on the order of like 10 different languages that you can get CircuitPython on. And that's like human language, not programming language. <laughs> and then lastly, uh, I showed the website earlier. There's a way for you to do a pull request to get your board on there as well. Um, so the first challenge when it came to making this cart is dealing with the bootloader. The bootloader is the only piece of code that the like, Game Boy has built in. And it does some tricks to uh, verify that the cart is a Nintendo cart. Uh, basically, it reads the logo uh, to display it. So it read, reads Nintendo to display it. And then it reads it again to verify it says Nintendo, which is great until you're not memory. <laughs> And then you can play a trick where you say, oh, I know this is the display one. Let me return whatever I want. And then when it verifies, we return Nintendo. Uh, there's also some checksum metadata over, over the cart that we just kind of drop a blob of metadata in because it doesn't use it for anything else. And uh, it plays the chime. So the first two notes that it plays, I had no control over. After that, it delegates to the cart. And once you have execution rights, you can do whatever you want, which is great. Um, so a deep dive, uh, just to, I'm going to show you like five slides of code uh, briefly, so, but I'm going to go pretty quick because there's slides of code. Uh, this is the gist of what, what I'm going to show you. I'm going to go from the bottom up because we started with hardware, so now we're at the bottom of, of the software side. The lowest level C is uh, what you would usually do in C, so all of the register banging and time critical stuff you can do in C. And then I'll show you how to hook that C into Python land and then what that looks like from Python land, um, and then talk about the high-level libraries you can build on top of that. Um, so what I did is I, I, this is the Q commands. So basically, just issue any instructions with data that you want. So you can write basically anything. Um, this is not the complete function, so it shouldn't make sense. Um, but the interesting bits is that uh, it's called common how. That's what we call all that lowest level C stuff within our repository. And then uh, for, the, for the Game Boy in particular, we actually have to add this uh, suffix basically to the data we do so that um, as, if we're not DMAing anything, we make sure our program counter doesn't continue incrementing. Like if we did a no op, the program counter would continue to count up and we risk it running off our memory address space and then we lose control. Uh, so what this is doing is just loading an address well within our address space and then repeatedly jumping to it forever until we, again, queue up a DMA and re return something else. Um, so that's the lowest level of how we issue commands. Uh, this is the level that ties it into Python, or part one of two. Uh, the very top is what we use for our documentation. So our documentation strings are directly in the code. Uh, we do some error checking, so Python does exceptions. Uh, so you can raise those from C, and then uh, the call, the second, the thing before the return is a call to the function I just showed you. Um, and then we wrap it in a function object, which is a, just a struct. And then uh, we have a dictionary or a table to map between names and the internal C objects that represent functions. Uh, so this is how you get, uh, in Python, a GBIO module with all those different names. So that's the entirety of, of what we have in terms of API at the very lowest like C to Python boundary. Um, this is what it looks like in Python. Um, you can see the instructions we use to load uh, just to basically set memory addresses. And at the very bottom, you'll see gbio.q commands. That's the call into C. Um, you can look at this later. It's not that interesting. Um, it's a lot of boilerplate, but it's regular boilerplate, so it's pretty easy to just do. Uh, the point is, is that if you're doing Python and it's too slow for what you're doing, there's an escape hatch you can use C to do what you want, and it's not, not bad. Um, and this is actually a, a cut down version of the demo I did at the start. So um, you say GB for Game Boy, the address that you want to write, and then you just assign to it. And under the hood, it's using all that Q command stuff to issue the instructions to set the memory on the Game Boy. Um, just to wrap up, um, 
we'd love to have more boards supported and more platforms supported. Uh, if you're interested at all, please reach out to me uh, or our community on Discord. There's the link for the Discord. Um, it's really easy if you use SAMD2151 or NRF 52840. So please try that if you are. Uh, if you don't use that, we'd still love to support your platform. It's just a, a bit more work. Um, and this is kind of the minimum requirements for a new platform. 32 bits, 32K RAM, 256K flash, and USB, because you don't have the edit cycle without USB. And that's it. Uh, thank you so much. Um, <laughs> go ahead.